Oblivion scored 32 points in their final two games, and they would need each and every one of them in order to secure their spot for the Pro League. A final game that saw our top two both in that final five left, and with both teams sitting a little lower on the leaderboard as far as those preseason points are concerned, if they were wanting to control their fate when it comes to qualifying for Pro League, they can't really afford to count on qualifying in those final four spots. So let's get down and do what it do, PLQ, TLDR, North American Edition. And game number one would take us just outside of Mirage Etois. Two of our final three teams were squads that garnered a lot of conversation this preseason between S2 and Drop-In Gaming, but DIG would have to play from the northern part of the zone and be forced out into the open relatively early. S2, of course, would have to worry about Team Board on their right, which could move in at any time if they got into a fight with Drop-In Gaming. And it was inevitably a big Bangalore ult that would pinch back S2 back up against Covered, pair that with a Dark Veil to break line of sight, and DIG would be able to move in. Then doing a good job of playing it nice and slow, but instead of being able to force the opposite two teams into a fight against one another, it would be Jay going absolutely nutty to clutch it up for drop-in gaming. They're gonna get pushed by drop in gaming. The, the nades start to come out, trying to ward off this swing around the wall. The drop in gaming know what they gotta do, and they only have 20 seconds left to do it. This catalyst wall, after its nerf, is gonna be going down that much faster. It's a lot of really good slow play here, even from dropping game. I'm still looking to see if they can eep out on top of that win. But Stunny's wall will be down here in just about five seconds. Then I'll be sight lines that share toe in toe. And I like the fence line play here upon that smoke to extend directly to where we see the final pull. Hopefully they put enough pressure down on S2 to force them into the fight across its board rather than themselves. Yeah, credit, credit to board for not pushing this because it looks like a fight that they would go for, but now playing along the fence line, drop in game, are the ones that have to make a decision. Utility gets thrown out to ward off the push. Wizard coin goes down. Board now as a duo are going to be put up against and against. Again, on the other side of this catalyst wall, up against drop in gaming. We're being shot from behind as the swing around the catalyst wall catches them completely off guard. Jay is doing so much work on the other side of this ring, but it's not going to be enough. Ooh. But he turns around and hits 87 flesh, not dropping him. It's a full wipe on the board here for dropping gaming in the 2v2 scenario. Jay, up what? the sky for the win from behind the fence line. I spoke way too soon. Jay is in. Humanly good at Apex Legends. What a finish for Drop In Gaming. And this Drop In Gaming squad is no stranger to popping off. They have had some fire rounds, including a semi final lobby in week number one where they were able to eclipse the 100 point marker. But could Drop In Gaming do what they haven't been able to do thus far in the preseason qualifiers and keep consistency over the course of a finals Monday? Only time would be able to write that story. Game number two would tell a little bit different of a tale, however. This time we would head down south, out between launch site and dome, and while drop-in gaming looked to be trying to make a play to secure some space in the final circle, they would end up getting pushed, which basically caused all the dominoes to fall to wrap up game number two. I can't see even in the midst of the smoke. There's these beams that have saved them before don't look like they're coming back. Nine lies, look for the finish, and they'll find it. Drop in gaining, get taken down in sixth place. Follow up immediately from the last member of the Billy Bears. Perfections clutches, picks up a red shield, and now has got to run again because the sandwich is incoming. Nine lies out. Oblivion retake all of these death boxes, and Perfections does trade. Even with the Billy Bear is down, now Oblivion are vulnerable on the low ground, and they're getting sent. It's a perfect send here, and it's gonna be one that ends the game overall here. Evolution on the opposite side are a full three-man force, and surprisingly, it is a very survival three-man in tow here. If Archaeology and Akimbo can get the full return on their reset after this rolling thunder, they can potentially put up a fight, but Eevee is moving in so quickly. Thermite does go a little wide there, but this position from Budo is devastating. 150 as the opener. Should be the go button for the rest of Evolution, but Budo drops down too early and gets cut down. Flinkster and Akimbo have fallen. It's Yasto and Yuris in a two versus one. One that they should win. The Hemlock doesn't connect, but Evolution still finds the kill. And it would be Evolution coming out on top. 
another team that it feels like we've seen quite a bit of in the North American region this preseason, and they would be the last ones of the party, cleaning up the last little bit and getting the dub along with their 11 KP, but Oblivion also had a pretty solid game right behind them in second with 10 KP, meaning that we would have five teams within six points of one another heading into game three. When time came for our last trip to World's Edge, however, we'd be heading back down south, just a bit south of Harvester towards Tree, and you could tell that the lobby was feeling tight. Nine teams converging in as zone number five started to close. But from there, the lobby would very quickly work its way down to the final few teams, and I don't think it mattered how many teams were left, the Crips would have such a phenomenal spot, plenty of cover, and being right where this ring was ending, that they would be able to wrap up World's Edge with a dub. Now, officially down to literally a strict 3v3 in our end zone here. And the Denver Thuggets, they're losing out on a whole heck of a lot of extra space well and before the Crypt are forced to give it up. Like you said, a few good shots, a few good amped cover throws here could put Crypt in the driver's seat. They have to be so careful, especially now with smokes down over on the side. I don't wonder what the ults are like on the opposite side of this. Denver Thuggets need some util to work with. That's the one thing that Crypt don't have. Crypt can't throw out a Rolling Thunder, can't throw out a Black Hole. Four more percent on that for Slater could change everything. Seconds ahead here, a Rolling Thunder would be critical in this end zone, especially with great damage from Vera found there over on the edge. A Gravelet in the sky means that it's even more impactful, but they've crossed the difference oh so quickly here. McLovin with the first drop, one in return for the 2v2. Behind the knockdown shield, Vera will eclipse this here position comes the third. as it will be the third and oh. the win for Crypt in game three. And now things were starting to look interesting on the scoreboard. Yeah, Evolution had their six point lead, but it was two teams tied for second, right behind them being the Denver Thuggets and Drop In Gaming. And really, all the way down to Rise in their three way tie with 20 points, any one of them could very quickly insert themselves into the lobby leader conversation with one strong game to start off on Stormpoint. And Stormpoint would not disappoint when it came to turning this lobby up onto its head. Our first trip onto it for game number four, and we would see the top seven teams on the scoreboard all going out basically in the first half of the lobby. Evolution in 15th, Denver Thuggets in 14th, Drop in Gaming in 13th, literally our top three right in a row. Chatham is Prime and Oblivion going out not too long after those three as well. And it would be Running Late and FSP, two teams that have been relatively quiet all preseason long, as well as Pen5, another team who had been quiet in this finals lobby, but a team that I think everyone was expecting to pop off at some point due to their consistency they had shown through the first two weeks. But as the final round started closing down, we would see Pen5 would be the first to fall. And they're even softening them both up a little bit. Look at that rolling thunder just to make matters even oh, more difficult. Oh, Good lord, that is so much damage. Pen5 evaporate and running late. Now with just one team left, need to push over this catalyst wall. They do have a gravity lift as the wall expires. They've already done so much damage. Out comes the black hole. Need to follow up, doesn't land, and Rico still has to send it with the R99. It is enough, running late. Masterfully finished game four. And Rigo able to make a phenomenal play on the horizon to give running late the dub. But after all the early exits in game number four, the top of the leaderboard would look extremely packed seven teams within eight points of one another, with just two games left to play. Evolution technically away from the pack by a few points, but everyone else within 31 to 34 points, meaning that this was still anyone's series for the taking. And in game number five, Evolution would make it back-to-back -back games, going out adding just a single point. The team that once sat in somewhat comfortably of a lead early would now sit back as the rest of the lobby would try to play this thing out and the oversleepers would be able to capitalize along with drop in gaming and the denver thuggets here we come remember we talked about on the low ground oh, barricades move out as you say quite a bit of damage likely going to be done by jp in this end zone gravity lift not really in a position where Charmander can use it. Instead, Charmander gets hit directly in the mouth with a full clip. And Oversleepers are forced to commit to the fight. Smoke break, go it down. Drop in gaming, still somewhere in the madness. But Oversleepers fire in a line and take the win. And all of a sudden, we had us an interesting scoreboard going into our final game. Evolution surrendering their lead and now being tied for third with the Denver Thuggets. 
being behind over sleepers and drop in gaming who would have the lead but don't think that that would mean anything as things would get rather interesting in game number six and as we had seen the fourth ring closing in who else but drop in gaming to still be alive looking to thrive and control their destiny they had a lead and they were looking to extend it with every placement that they could achieve from here on out and just when it seemed that DIG was going to be the team punching things home, our North American PLQ for week number three gave us a banger of a finale. Still very much in this and putting out some pressure, but Denver Thuggets are no more. Drop in gaming finally can let that breath go in oblivion. It's up to them to climb the leaderboards as high as they can possibly go, making their argument for preseason qualifier overall leaderboards. They've got great KP to boot here and will guaranteedly win this game, but at overall 38 before walking into this one, the major KP that drop in gaming put up, I mean, it is a tight, tight mathematics. On the other side of this, Billy Bears, who started the sixth game of the day with eight total points, have taken out Four squads so far. Billy Bears are on a roll. Oblivion gonna try and cut that short. Both get thrown out. Kimbo doesn't take much damage on the way up. Deals a little on the way down with some help from Arcology. Takes down one. The Billy Bears get sent. Oblivion take the win. Cementing themselves the first place team for the sixth game and moving themselves pretty darn far up the leaderboards. It's a huge win for the likes of Bolivian, but at the end of the day, the only question on everyone's minds is, is it enough here? Especially after an incredibly dominant and KP-filled Game 6 from Drop In Game. And it would be Oblivion able to pull it out, needing each and every last one of their 21 points in game number six, able to overcome a double digit deficit and a top five placement in game number six from the lobby leader DIG. I know I definitely wasn't counting them as one of the horses still in the race, and it didn't seem like the deaths did either. Looking at the way that sixth game played out, I saw drop in taking their fate into their own hands, and I, th I think it should have been enough. That's my belief. What we'll wait to find out. And and alongside all of that too is the insane last minute try there from the Denver Thuggets as well in their final moments, knowing that they breached the top five. If not for their poor low ground positioning there, it was an incredible, we'll say, potential for them. Yeah. I, I I I really I really don't see anybody having taken it from them. Thinking through rewinding on what the Denver Thuggets were able to accomplish in that last ring, I also can't blame them for sending it on the low ground, knowing they had a chance to mix things up, but it really felt like a fight between two teams. With Oblivion clinching a win, there's a small chance. Zephyr, do we know? Are we ready? Zephyr knows. Zephyr knows. All right. I, I, it's between two, it maybe, maybe three teams. Here it is. Okay. With one Pro League invite to represent week three of the North American preseason qualifiers, it's none other than Oblivion walking and winning their way into Pro League. <laughs> By how much? Ooh, me. put Free. the standings on the put board, the answer Dia's question, show him, <laughs> show him. Put the standings. What? One. By one, one I need point. to watch that whole game again. So that's going to leave us with one week left of Pro League qualifiers, and next week we will find out the final five squads, not just from NA, but from each region to qualify for ALGS year number four. It looks like in the North American region right now, it's a five team race for the top four spot based off of those preseason points. And I would say even teams like DIG, Oversleepers, and Boys 
are going to need to rely on a week four W if they want to be in the big leagues. But let me know who you're pulling for to make pro league down in those comments below. Remember those likes along with those comments tell YouTube that you love the video and think they should be shown into more people. And if it's your first time through, what it do? I'm your boy Q and I cover quite a bit of ALGS as well as some other esports over here on the channel. So if you're looking for a good place to keep up with every region every week with videos just like this one here, make sure you smack that subscribe button down below and you've got those notifications on. And of course, make sure you're checking this playlist right up there to make sure that you're up to date on all our most recent breakdowns. Until we do catch y'all back over here for the next one, man, don't forget with everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere, game hard and love hard, all right, y'all? It's your boy Q, signing out.